Hey everyone, today's video is about when you get hit by a quirk that turns you into an animal. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share, and let's get going. The sun was high in the sky as you walked with Bakugo and Kirishima through the bustling streets of Mustafu. The day had started off like any other, with the three of you enjoying a rare day off together. As heroes, finding time to relax was a luxury, so you were making the most of it. Kirishima grinned, his sharp teeth flashing in the sunlight as he draped an armor over your shoulder. Hey, how about we hit that new ramen shop down the street? I heard they serve the best spicy miso ramen. Bakugo scoffed, walking on your other side with his hands stuffed in his pockets. Ramen again. You're gonna turn into a damn noodle if you keep this up, shitty hair. You chuckled, leaning into Kirishima's warmth. Well, I'm down for ramen, but maybe you can get dessert after. There's a coffee nearby with the killer mochi ice cream. Bakugo's eyes glinted as he smirked. Now you're talking. I could go for some sweets. The three of you continued your banter, the familiar rhythm of your relationship bringing a sense of peace. As you turned the corner towards the ramen shop, a sudden explosion of light caught your attention. Before any of you could react, a figure dashes towards you. Their hand outstretched towards you. Look out, Kirishima shouted, immediately hardening his body as he tried to shield you. But it was too late. The villain's quirk activated, and you felt a strange sensation wash over you. Your vision blurred, and the world around you seemed to spin out of control. The last thing you heard before everything went dark was Bakugo's enraged roar. When you regained consciousness, the world looked different. Everything seemed bigger, and the colors were slightly muted. You blinked, trying to shake off the strange feeling, only to realize that something was very, very wrong. Boy, where the hell are they? Bakugo's voice boomed, sounding more frantic than you've ever heard them. You tried to call out to him, but all that came out was a small, high-pitched squeak you looked down at yourself and froze. Your hands, no, your paws, were tiny and covered in fur. You had turned into an animal, a small one at that. Judging by the reflection on a nearby pond, you were now a fluffy little fox with a bushy tail and wide, curious eyes. Kirishima crouched down, his eyes scanning the ground until they landed on you. Bakugo, look. Bakugo whipped around his eyes narrowing as he caught sight of you. No way. Is that... He took a step closer, his fierce expression softening as he crouched down, beside Kirishima. Wyan. You nodded, doing your best to communicate with them, despite your current form. You could see the concern and confusion in their eyes, but there was also relief. They knew it was you. Kirishima reached out carefully, his hand hovering above your head. Can I? You nudged your head against his hand, feeling a sense of comfort as his fingers gently scratched behind your ears. He let out a small chuckle, though there was a hint of sadness in his voice. Even as a fox, you're so cute. Bakugo sighed, pinching the bridge of his nose. This is a damn mess. How the hell are we supposed to fix this now? We'll figure it out, man, Kirishima said confidently, though he kept pitying you. First, we need to get them somewhere safe. Yeah, yeah, but when I find that bastard who did this, I'm gonna blow him to pieces. Bakugo growled, his fury temper flaring up again. You nuzzled against Kirishima's hand, trying to reassure them that you're okay, despite the circumstances. Kirishima scooped you up gently, cradling you against his chest, as Bakugo led the way back to the dorms. Back at the dorms, they lead you down on the couch, both of them sitting close by, clearly not wanting to leave your side. You curled up, feeling small and vulnerable, but also comforted by their presence. Okay, Kirishima said, running a hand through his hair. We need to think of a plan. There's got to be a way to reverse this quirk, right? Bakugo crossed his arms, his expression dark. 
most quirks wear off after a while. I guess we just need to wait it out, but we still need to find that guy. You flicked your tail, trying to communicate your agreement. Kirishima smiled down at you, his eyes softening. Don't worry, Moyan. We've got you. We're not going to let anything happen. Bakugo leaned back, his intense gaze never leaving you. Damn right. And we're going to have a serious talk about getting hit by random quirks when you're back. You huffed, rolling your eyes in the most fox-like way possible, which earned a laugh from Kirishima and a smirk from Bakugo. As the day went on, they took turns keeping you company, making sure that you were comfortable. Kirishima brought you a blanket to curl up on, while Bakugo made sure that no one disturbed you. Hours passed and you were starting to wonder if the quirk would wear off. You were curled up in Bakugo's lap, and Kirshima sat beside him, his hand resting on your back. Maybe you should call someone, Kirshima suggested. I mean, it's been a while, and they're still like this. Bakugo grumbled, clearly frustrated by the situation. I hate to admit this, but you might be right. We can't just sit around waiting. Before they could decide, you felt a strange tingling sensation. Your body began to shift and change, and within moments, you were back to your normal self. You blinked, feeling disoriented as you looked up at your two boyfriends, who were staring at you in shock. Oyan, you're back, Kirshima exclaimed, immediately pulling you into a tight hug. Bakugo let out a breath that he'd been holding, his hands gripping your shoulders as he looked you over. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. That was weird. You scared us, you know that. Kirishima pulled back, just enough to cup your face in his hands. You smiled, leaning into his touch. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Next time, don't go getting yourself hit by some random quirk. Got it? Bakugo huffed, but there was a softness in his eyes that he rarely showed. Got it. And the three of you sat together finally able now to relax that the crisis was over. Kirishima kept his arms around you, his warm to constant comfort, while Bakugo sat close by, his presence reassuring. As the night went on, the fear and tension slowly melted away, replaced by the familiar warmth of being together. You knew that no matter what happened, as long as you had Bakugo and Kirishima by your side, you'd be okay. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you liked this video. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And goodbye!